Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I've got the uh, Hubson Zeno 2 again today. Uh, I actually flew this drone yesterday out at Lucky Peak Reservoir. I was going to fly it with the two Femis, the 2018 version and the 2020 version, uh, but it didn't perform. Uh, we initially had some problems even connecting uh, my iPhone to the controller so I switched out the cables and we got hooked up uh, and then I took off and I got clear out in the middle of the lake and all of a sudden it gave me an error code that said the SD card was too slow well same SD card as I've had in here from the first day I flew this drone so I knew that sounded a little odd and then we lost uh, the FPV altogether so I had to bring the drone back uh, with really no uh, FPV, which is no big deal. Obviously, as drone pilots, we pre prepare for those kind of eventualities. Uh, return to home worked, and as soon as it got uh, uh, close enough, I canceled return to home and then, and then uh, just did a, a manual landing, recycled it, uh, and tried again, tried actually several times and every time I would start video, take off, and then we'd lose FPV shortly thereafter. Now, what I was afraid of is that I had the, uh, the dreaded uh, ribbon cable issue with the gimbal on these things. A number of these early build, at least I assume the early build ones, uh, <clears throat> people have had problems with the ribbon cable uh, and had to replace it uh, in order to get FPV back again. Now, supposedly the the light in the uh, right next to the SD card slot if you have that issue would blink green and yellow uh, I, I don't have that I just have a green light there so I don't know what that means and I took it home and I tested it just bench tested it and I, I couldn't get it to do it again I had perfect FPV I let it sit there and record for several minutes. It did just fine. Uh, I even fired up the motors, uh, you know, to see if that had something to do with it. And uh, nothing. So I brought it out here just to test it today, just to see if FPV works, see how the drone will fly. And uh, if indeed I do get an error code, I want to be able to look at that little LED and see if I get the flashing and then know that it's a bad uh, ribbon cable. But, uh, you know, the Xeno 2, people have been having FPV problems with this drone from the very start. Some related to the, the ribbon cable, others not. So, so who knows? Anyway, let's, uh, let's get this thing up in the air. And uh, if we got a good connection, we'll fly it around and we'll try some of, the, uh, some of the tricks that this guy has, some of the intelligent flight modes, and just mess around with it a little bit and, and, and burn through a battery. So let's see if we can get up in the air and cross our fingers and let's hope everything works okay. So you saw on the screen there that one of the battery clips uh, was not slid all the way forward uh, and it gave us a warning, which is good. And the drone status, uh, everything looks good. Everything says normal. So. Uh, although, look at this, no FPV. We're connected, but no FPV. This is hilarious. I, <laughs> when I had it set up at home, it was perfect. And I, and I recorded uh, for several minutes, and now we get out here in the field, and yeah, just a black screen. So I'm going to pick up the drone, and I'm going to look at that uh, uh, LED and see if I can see anything there. Okay, so the drone is running and we're looking at this little LED. So if I'm looking at it, if I look at it from one angle, I see a red light. If I look at it from another angle, I see a green light. So I guess I can say that I see a red and a green light if I look at it just right. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, if the camera will even focus in on that. I'm kind of moving it around, so hopefully we'll catch some of that here, but uh, but I don't know. But in any case, uh, yeah, so clearly there's a problem. I think then that probably my next step is, uh, is to replace that ribbon cable uh, and see what happens. So 
I, I do have another one. As you can see here, the, the gimbal is working just as it should. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, just for the fun of it, I'm going to reboot it once here and see if we get something back. Okay, so of course we got aircraft disconnected, so let's give it a second, see if it'll connect. I'll tell you, the frustrating things about problems like this uh, is like I said, look, we got FPV now. So, uh, so I'm going to look at that light again and see if I see any difference. So it's exactly the same. I see a red, and, and we have FPV, and I see a red and a green light in there, but we've got, F, we've got FPV, so guys, I have no clue. Well, it says ready to fly, so we might as well take off here. I'm going to switch to video, and I'm going to change it to 30 frames per second because it always defaults to 60. Uh, really, the only time you should use 60 is if you're uh, filming, if you want to do something in slow motion for the most part. Uh, so let's go ahead and start video. So as you can see, video has started. Give it just a second here. Okay, let's go ahead and take off. So I'm going to hit take off on the app. Okay, there it is. The good old Hubson drop is, uh, as we've seen in the past, is still there. There's some people walking across the park here, so I want to wait till they are out of the way before we get too carried away here. But we'll yaw it around. Okay, I can. I think I can avoid where they're at here, so. We're going to go to the opposite corner of the park here. So let's do a droney. We're going to go uh, reverse and up now. Drop that gimbal down just a little. So look at that. We've got... Uh, We've got good FPV, uh, you know, why we didn't get it there and why it took a reboot to uh, start it back up, i just telling you I have no clue. So uh, you can see those kids uh, walking across the park down there, so we are going to avoid where they're at. I think we can come closer. Yeah, they're okay. We're already past them. We'll just take a little tour out across the park. You guys have seen me fly out here uh, quite often. Yeah, so now I'm getting that same yeah, and then we lost FPV, so I got that same uh, speed warning on the card. So we're going to hit uh, return to home. So it's going to come back to us here, but we lost FPV completely. So we'll take a look at it. Uh, we'll take a look at those lights again when we land it and see if we see anything weird there. And the drone's back. Didn't mess any. Didn't, didn't mess around, wasting any time coming back to us here. And I'm going to try and hit the. Uh, yeah, and it just gives me that speed is too low. Which, like I said, I this is the same card I've used on this drone since new. Yesterday, I even put another uh, another card in there. So it's something weird going on there. Yeah, it says it's searching for the drone apron, but it doesn't have a camera, so. It's, uh, it even dropped the uh, camera down. It's gonna hit it pretty close here. I don't even know if I wanna cancel it. Yeah, we're gonna mow some grass here. Yeah, so it, uh, well, I'll tilt it down there. We, it missed it by a little bit, but that's not too bad, is it? Uh, yeah, so that is really, really odd. Uh, you know, I wish I'd have brought, 
I wish I'd have brought another SD card with me because uh, I do have some faster cards at home but that just doesn't make any sense to me that that's the problem because I have never you know like I said this is the same card I've been using in this drone since it was new so okay let me uh, I'm gonna take a look and see what we have for lights on there so exactly the same two lights if I hold it at an angle here uh, you can see a red light if I hold it at another angle you can see a green light so if I hold it just right you can see both lights at the same time so uh, I don't know, you know, if that means ribbon cable or, or not. I, I've, I've heard it was uh, red and yellow, but uh, yeah, you just don't know. So, uh, all right, uh, let me uh, let me shut it all down here. So obviously, I'm disappointed in the Hubson Zeno 2. You know, I haven't had that, got that many flights on it. We should be having those kind of issues. You know, if it was a drone that I'd been flying for a year or two. Hey, something like this happens, and you go, okay, you know, you've you've been using it for a while, but uh, but it, you know, it, it just I think I got mine in March, and I've flown it, gosh, maybe a dozen times, maybe more than that, but not much. Uh, so it is disappointing, and there's there, there it has been a, a problematic drone. Uh, people have had problems with them, and that ribbon cable being one of them on on the uh, the gimbal on the camera and I suspect that's what my issue is so uh, I'll either change that uh, that cable out myself or take it someplace and have it done uh, but I will let you guys know what the resolution is oh and I might add I will likely also try another high-speed SD card I have some Samsung ultra or not Samsung uh, uh, SanDisk uh, Ultra Extreme, whatever they call you always get their names confused. This is a Samsung that's in it now. Like I said, I've used that same card since the beginning. It's been fine. I tried another card with it, a Patriot high-speed card, uh, yesterday and had the same issue. So I really don't think it's an SD card thing. I think it is uh, likely that cable, but uh, we'll follow up and uh, well, I'll let you guys know what happens. Hey guys, I didn't think I'd be back out here so soon. It's probably three or four hours later after I made my last bit of this video with the Hubson Zeno 2. I did install a new ribbon cable. It was successful. I fired it up at, at home on the bench and I got good solid FPV on the bench. That doesn't mean it's going to do it out here. Uh, so I suspect that that was the problem but you know what there's only one way to find out and that's for us to uh, put it up in the air here and see just a word about uh, putting in that ribbon cable I was uh, a, a little bit concerned that that might be beyond my skill level uh, but honestly it was a piece of cake and trust me if I can do it you can do it essentially uh, six screws on the bottom here and then plugging a cable in uh, at both ends a couple of screws on the on the board on the camera uh, but uh, you know I'm an older guy so sometimes that uh, those kind of fine motor skills doing stuff like that can be difficult uh, but I was able to do it so I guess what I'm trying to tell you is if you have a ribbon cable go bad on your Xeno 2, uh, don't be afraid to tackle it yourself. It's it's fairly uh, straightforward. And uh, what I did is uh, on YouTube, I'd seen it before, I remember some months ago, but I looked at it again. Chad B uh, on his channel has a really nice video on how to replace that cable. So I will link uh, that video of his in the description below. Uh, but in the meantime, let's uh, put this thing up in the air and let's see if we're successful. Uh, you know, as you were going to recall earlier today, initially we had FPV, but then we got out there a ways and it gave me that SD card error and quit. So we'll try it again here and uh, hopefully we'll have more success. Oh, by the way, those lights, those two LED lights that I was talking about earlier, the green one and the red one, they're still there. So, you know, if that means something, I, I don't know. Uh, but those both of those lights are, are still on if you look one way you can see the red light if you look the other way You can see the green light, but uh, 
in any case, let's put this guy in the air and let's see how it works. Okay, uh, I've got the app fired up and we've got 11 satellites. It says that it's uh, ready to fly, so, uh, and then our status report here. Let's scroll through that real quick. It says everything is normal, so it looks good. I'm going to switch to video. And again, I'm going to go in like you have to do every time and switch the frame rate to 30 frames per second. It always defaults to 60. Hubson, I don't know. I wish you'd let us uh, keep the defaults where we want. Uh, white balance is on automatic. We'll just leave that. Colors on ordinary. We'll just leave that too. Uh, let's uh, let's mess. Let's uh, start video now. Video is started and. Uh, we're going to put this baby in the air, so uh, auto take off right now. And you guys could just barely see that take off. And typical of the Xeno does the, the usual Xeno drop, but now it's rising, and that's without me touching anything. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's still going up. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what, I get a kick out of this drone. Uh. I'm going to move it forward here. Boy, it's, it, it is something else. It really moves around. Okay, so I got it looking at us here a little bit. Uh, so far, so good on FPV. Let's uh, jag back and forth here a little bit. I always like to show that gimbal in action, you know? And it seems to be working fine, so uh, I guess we did okay uh, with that ribbon cable. Let's do our manual droney reversing up now. And like I said, so far so good. We'll go out there a couple hundred meters. Okay, a little bit more then. Uh, you know, gosh darn, this thing always, I like grid lines and it always shuts them off. I wonder if it'll let me turn them on. No, it won't. Not while we're recording. So we'll just have to do without it here. Uh, but, you know, it looks like we get a good, solid, uh, stable horizon. So... Let's uh, kind of yaw around. Drone's taking commands just fine. I, uh, I am cautiously optimistic here, folks. I think we can say that it was that, uh, that ribbon cable. Let's see if we can go uh, across the pond here. That's kind of the way we have to cross now and get out into the field. And the drone is roaring by right above me now. That car's turning, yeah, we can get across there at a gap between these cars. Get my antennas pointed towards the drone, although what I will say about this drone is it's, uh, boy, it has always seemed to have a good connection. We're out there about 360 meters. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, that uh, we never made it this far when I started having problems uh, yesterday, when I was flying it yesterday. So uh, it's pretty clear that that ribbon cable is what was giving us the issue. And we're going to stay out above the fields here. Really nice connection. Getting a little bit of stutter on FPV. Yeah, now a little break up. Okay, that's good enough. I'm not going to push it on this test flight. That's our gigantic Walmart right there. One of those super Walmarts. 
And on the other end, down here across from the park, they're putting in a, 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 a brand new Costco. So you guys are going to remember uh, 10 Mile Park. Uh, this is 10 Mile Road, and they just widened that out. They really, really widened out the road. And there we are at uh, Heroes Park. And what I'm going to say is, you know, I've got some trees and stuff in between me and the drone, and and uh, so I'm pleased with our connection here. We got a little bit of uh, bumpiness and FPV, but you know, it's not like I'm up real high, and I'm shooting this signal through some trees to get there. Let's uh, let's wait a second here and let's see if we can uh, get a gap in traffic. I'm going to throw it into uh, sport mode. And as soon as we see a gap here, whoops, look at that. We got that TF speed error. Oh, now it's that same error. Yeah, don't know. Uh, I'll be darned. Well, I spoke too soon, folks. So clearly it wasn't that ribbon cable. So I'm going to hit return to home. So the drone is coming home. And, uh, you know, does it have something to do with my SD card? Well, I guess the next step is to uh, try like a SanDisk uh, Ultra SD card. You know, we made it a lot further that time. So I am just not sure what to say about that. And here's the drone coming down. Wow, how disappointing. Yeah, I got to tell you, I'm pretty disappointed. Uh, like I said earlier, this is the same SD card that uh, that I've used in it in the past without issue. So, well, since it was new, the same SD card. So, I mean, I suppose a card can go bad, but I tried another one yesterday and kind of had the same issue. So, so I just don't know. So I stopped it here. Well. I thought I stopped it. It just kept coming down. I, I canceled return to home, but it uh, it must have already been in landing mode. So we mowed a little bit of grass there. I am uh, I'm really uh, I'm really disappointed here. So you know I thought uh, I that potentially it was that ribbon cable, but uh, that's not it. So the only other thing I can think of is I'm going to put a SanDisk Ultra Extreme, one of those ones that writes it close to. 100 megabits. Uh, I've got some of those at home, so so I'll try that. But uh, like I said, I that, that just doesn't sound right to me because this card has worked in it since it was new. But it it went quite a while before we got that error. I'll be honest with you, just don't know what to say. Uh, yeah. Okay, stay tuned. Uh, we'll go from there. Hey, okay guys, third time's a charm today. So, uh, got home, charged another battery on the Xeno 2, and switched out the card. So I got a uh, SanDisk uh, Extreme Pro, write speed of uh, 90 megabits uh, per second. So, I mean, if it, if it can't, if that card isn't fast enough for this drone, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what to say, but uh, in any case, uh, We'll, uh, we'll give that a shot. Uh, what I will say is on the bench, I, I put the card in there, I formatted it, and just on the bench, I started it recording, and I recorded for 14 minutes and had no problems. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm at the, the school that's kind of close to my house here. We'll put this guy up again, and uh, we'll see if we can get some flight time with it now and see if we can maintain FPV. If that doesn't work, I, I don't know where we'll go from here, but uh, in any case, uh, let's, uh, let's put her in the air. Okay, looks like we're connected starting the X Hubson 2 app right now. Give it a second here, look at that. We, it grabbed, uh, battery clip is not fastened, it's interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, fix that battery. It just uh, just needed to push it down a little bit more. It says we're ready to fly. We've got 16 satellites. Let's uh, switch to video. Let's go in to settings, and as usual, I have to switch it to 30 frames per second. 
and then we're going to go and turn on our grid lines and I'm going to go ahead and format the card again. I had, uh, I've got that 14 minutes or whatever a video I took on my bench. I don't need to save that so we're just going to format the card and it says card formatting success and then it tests the speed. The only thing I can say about that Samsung U3 card that I had, that Samsung Evo, possibly, I think the write speed on that thing is like 60 megabytes per second, something like that, is maybe it does degrade over time, right? It's possible, you know, because it's I've used that card quite a bit, so maybe it degrades. Anyway, starting video now. Video successfully started, so I'm going to get out of the way so you guys can watch the takeoff here, and we'll take off. And the Hubson drop. It's moving around a little bit up and down. Typical for this guy. Let's turn it around here. I've got the uh, the yaw speed turned down pretty low. And we'll bring it in. I'm feeling brave here. Okay, we're going to uh, bank it back and forth here. So you guys can watch that. Uh, the, uh, the gimbal in action there. Okay, time for a uh, time for a little drony. Now, of course, uh, I know some of my viewers have told me in the past that be careful I don't hit that sign, but we're not going to do that. We're going to hit the up stick so we don't hit the sign. So, reverse and up now. And a little bit of sun flare because we're facing the sun this direction. And this drone is known for that. Let's get some more altitude. Okay, I'm over the top of the street there. Let's not get too carried away. And we want to face someplace other than directly at the sun here. So let's. Uh, Let's go to the other corner of the lot here. And uh, we're just in normal mode now. Scooting along at about 8 meters per second. So far so good. Look at that. Two minutes and, uh, and it seems to be doing fine. We'll just head straight for this corner. We're not going to cross the street. So, uh, as my friend Ron Brown says, uh, this drone is the has got the best camera uh, when it's facing away from the sun. And boy, look at that flare as I yaw it around. And yeah, the sun's pretty low in the sky there. Down there in that lot there, I see we have uh, some of Meridian's finest having a meeting. We don't want to bother them, so we're going to go in between these two school buildings here. And then we'll take a, uh, a hard left, and we'll go directly away from the sun. A little bit of break up there. I was facing uh, a, a controller away from the uh, drone. And we are shooting through some trees here, so that's, uh, that's kind of expected. So I didn't go quite as far over as I thought I did, so we're going to uh, bank to the drone's right. There we go. Let's pick the camera up just a little. There's that rule of thirds, and as you can see, it's still really smoky here. Uh, we still have a lot of, it's, it's smoke that's blown up uh, from California. The, the weather pattern is going uh, northeast, and so we're getting a lot of smoke from the forest fires in California. Some of them in Oregon as well. Wow, so far so good. So, uh, earlier this morning or this afternoon when we were over at Heroes Park we got about five minutes of video before we got that uh, 
card speed error. So maybe it was, you know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. So we're going to go straight over the top of Discovery School here. And, and this will kind of give you an idea of how much smoke we have in the air. Because uh, this is one of my favorite spots to, to show uh, video with drones. I, I go right over the top of the school here. And we are facing directly uh, over the uh, Boise front there. And the reason I like this shot is because there's some color in it. In fact, uh, you've, you've got those, you know, those play structures down at the bottom of the screen, and then obviously the green. And then you have things close in, the trees, etc. And then far off, you've got the mountains. And so you can look for the definition in the mountains and stuff. Well, obviously, in this case, there's so much haze, you, you can't see them. So, uh, gosh, so far, so good. That is... Uh, we're, we're over five minutes now, so that's more than what we've done in the past. You know what? Evidently, it really was an SD card problem. And uh, like I said yesterday, I put a Patriot card in there and had the same issues. So maybe it wasn't, it wasn't fast enough. So I don't know. I don't know. Cautiously optimistic here. So back into the sun. We're going to do the same kind of rotation again. I'm going to drop the gimbal down so that so that hopefully we get some better quality video. We're not facing right into the sun. And the drone is right to my right as I'm facing the same direction that the drone is flying. And you still get some, even though I'm not looking at the sky, you can still at the top of the screen there, you can see how that bright sun is kind of overwhelming uh, the video here. And we are not going to go over the top of that street. Again, we're going to go to the, uh, to the drone's left. And Das Polizei are still down there having their meeting. We'll, uh, I don't want to bother them, so we're going to go this direction. Let me pick that gimbal up again. So what we'll do here is let's bring it back this time, and uh, let's. Uh, we'll, we might as well mess around with some intelligent flight modes, right? As long as we're doing this, let's try some stuff out. Let's throw this baby into sport mode and. Uh, Let's, uh, let's see how fast we can get her up to here. So, uh, switched it into sport mode here. And uh, let's see how the gimbal hands it, handles it. We've got the sun at our back. So, full stick forward here. We'll go over the top of Discovery School there. And I'm telling you what, 18.7, 18.8. 18.9, 19.1 meters per second. That's over 40 miles an hour. That's about 41 or 42 miles an hour. That is uh, all in the mail, folks. Well, gosh, I hate to admit it, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy about it, but evidently it was truly an SD card issue. So let's bring it back to us here, and uh, again, I'm in sport mode, and we'll uh, we'll try some stuff out here with this guy. Boy, I'll tell you what, this thing does not like looking into the sun. Man, I'm watching that drone up there; it is moving. Okay, let's bring her down. This guy does some pretty good tracking, so uh, so let's maybe we'll, we should try some tracking here. Boy, there's a bird chasing. Yeah, a hawk. Oh man, he was checking it out. Oh man, it, I was watching the whole thing. He was heading right for it. So I pushed the up stick. I, I mean, I had my eyes right on it. It was cool. I don't know if you, I don't know if the drone caught any of the video, but boy, he was after it there. 
That was fun. It was cool because I saw him coming and just as he was getting close, I just pushed full stick up and, and my, my understanding is that's the way you get away from birds. And he just flew past it then, but he was heading right for it. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's go into tracking mode here. Following mode. And we're going to do uh, active track, and it will, in active track, it'll follow me, uh, and I'm going to fire up my, uh, my GoPro here. So hopefully I can uh, record with the GoPro and control it at the same time. So we're going to go into active track. Altitude is too low. which is probably good because uh, we want to be above all the trees and everything here. Okay, let's see if we can back it up and we are. Tracking typically on this drone works pretty good. So you can see it there. That's one thing that uh, that I'll say Hudson has always done pretty well. Is uh, especially like compared to whoops, it lost me. Yeah, I was sitting there bragging, and look at that. Okay. We're gonna stop there. I wonder if it was the sun, you know, it was looking into the sun there. I'm gonna give it a pass on that because, uh, uh, because of the sun. Okay, here we go. So it's picked me up again. All right, okay. So we proved that it can track. Uh, and obviously you can see it's right in the sun there. Let's, uh, let's try something else. Let's stop that. Let's go into uh, uh, orbit mode. And, uh, oh, I forgot about the GPS accuracy test. We can do that real quick. I'm bringing the drone down, getting close to it. Next step. So you gotta have the drone, I can't remember, within so many meters it's got me. So we'll go back up again. And we're still in sport mode. Let me put it back into uh, normal mode. and back it off just a little so uh get me in the frame there again and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go into orbit mode and we're going to use uh th this one is interesting because you the, this drone lets you use either the transmitter or you can set the current location as point of interest so we're going to do the transmitter so in theory, it will, uh, yeah, it's got a 37 meter radius and an altitude of 16 meters, execute immediately. And it'll just start circling me with the uh, controller here. So I believe in theory here, I should be able to walk around and it'll still circle. And it's, uh, boy, I'm looking at that hawk. They got it. Looks like it's nesting in the, uh, uh, in the cell phone tower back there. 
Okay, I wonder how I can get back into that. Uh, I was hoping to get back into that menu and speed it up just a little bit here, but you probably can't do that. So I click stop. We've seen enough of that anyway. Let's, uh, yeah, I'm watching that hawk. Let me turn around and look at the cell phone tower here, see if I can get it for you. They're messing around in that cell phone tower. So we've been recording for 15 minutes. So we're successful, I believe. We've cured our issue. So let's go in a little closer here. I don't see him there now. He was there just a second ago. He was flitting around there. Okay, let's go up above it. Let's uh, let's do an orbit above the uh, above the tower. Grab some more altitude. So what I'm doing now is I'm centering us on the tower. And I'm trying to hold the uh, GoPro at the same time, so not being very successful. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Okay, so I'm going to go back into uh, Sell Me Low Battery. We're going to go into orbit mode. And this time we are going to set the aircraft's current location as point of interest. So we need to back it off now. So we're backing the drone off. And then we are going to execute immediately. And we're going to speed it up quite a bit this time. Maybe. Let me pick up the gimbal so you can see what we're looking at. Okay. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the drone up there with the GoPro here, but we're looking up at it. And it's doing a perfect orbit. I mean, that's that's those are some of the things that the Xeno does really well. It doesn't have a ton of intelligent flight modes, but what it does have, it uh, it seems to do well. Uh, losing us there on tracking like it did is unusual for this guy. Well, I'm really stoked that we cured our problem. While it's uh, while it's orbiting here, I'm going to uh, I'm going to walk back to uh, the landing pad and the camera, and uh, we'll when when I get back there, we'll uh, execute a return to home and see if we can get a precision landing. I'm gonna hand this GoPro off to my lovely wife and let her, it's recording. And, uh, okay, so we are gonna click stop on the screen and then we're gonna hit uh, return to home uh, on, the, uh, on the app and take off point. And it won't take it long to get back to us. You can see it here. And as soon as it gets up above us, I am going to turn off uh, recording. We've been recording for about 19 minutes successfully here. So I'm gonna stop recording as soon as it starts descending. And it's orienting itself. And it's coming down, okay. I stopped recording, so that's one of the things you have to do with the Xeno is it cannot execute a precision landing while you're recording. So it'll get down here to a certain point and it should drop the camera down. Yeah, there it did it. Okay. So it did it. It's looking for the landing pad now. And it, we see the target there. Look at that. I think it's going to get it. Look at that. It's going to be pretty darn close. You know, typical of the Xeno, though, it, 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 it struggles to maintain its spot in space. And even when it's doing its precision landing, look at it move around. That is all automated. I'm not touching the controls. And yeah, it's moving off a little bit. It kind of lost its spot. And so uh, 
we're about uh, probably a foot and a half, I'd say, uh, probably half a meter off of the uh, off of the landing pad there. So, uh, you know, that's not too bad. So, yeah, uh, let me uh, let me get everything shut down here, and uh, and we'll do a conclusion. Hey, okie dokie. Uh, so this was interesting. Look, it, it did just fine then by switching to that. Uh, SanDisk Extreme, uh, Ultra Extreme, or whatever it's called, uh, with a 90 megabit write speed, it seemed to cure the problem. It's uh, what's fascinating to me is, as I said, I've been using that same Samsung card in the thing since it was new. Then all of a sudden, uh, it became a problem. But I suppose those SD cards can degrade after a period of time, and I suspect uh, that maybe what happened with that card uh, but the other odd thing is yesterday also I've got a Patriot card that I use in my GoPro and the GoPro obviously shoots in H.265 4k 60 frames per second all of that stuff and it works fine in the GoPro but uh, it wasn't it would not I would get that same speed error uh, with that card uh, in the Xeno so I don't know. I don't know what to say, but I can tell you this. Uh, I did replace the ribbon cable uh, on the gimbal today, thinking that that was the problem. And then when I went out and flew at Heroes Park, it flew longer than it did before. I had FPV for about five minutes before it quit. Uh, but as you saw here, we burned through a whole battery, about 19 minutes of video on the card. Uh, without issue, so uh, I'm going to pronounce the the problem cured, and and I'm relieved that it is. So, uh, yeah, the 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 Zeno 2 uh, interesting drone. Uh, what kind of inspired me to fly this even yesterday was Ron Brown's video where he was flying at the beach, and he was showing, ironically, the difference between flying into the sun and flying away from the sun. It's one of the best drone cameras you'll ever see, is with the sun at its back. When it's flying into the sun, it, it's not just that you get the, uh, the lens flare. It's also that it, it seems to just blow everything out uh, more than other cameras and other drones. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'm, I'm just glad that we've got it figured out and we've got it working. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something from this. I did. Uh, and I'm going to tell you again, uh, if you have a bad ribbon cable on your Xeno 2, uh, you know, if, if a guy like me can install it without trouble, I, let me assure you, you can. So uh, I was a little bit intimidated by it, uh, but then I thought, heck, I'm just going to do it. I breezed right through it. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to tell you it's, it's not that big of a deal. So if you do have to put a ribbon cable in, it's easy enough and uh, I guess one thing I know is I, I've got a new ribbon cable in here and my old ribbon cable probably wasn't bad so I'll, I'll hang on to that one too. Uh, anyway, I guess that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out and if you like this kind of content please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, you know and everybody says ring that bell and all that stuff so you know when new, uh, new videos come out. Uh, so I'll say it too, uh, but honestly, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time to look at this video, and uh, yeah, we absolutely will see you on the next one, Hubson uh, Zeno 2. All right, see you guys later.